Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white flash and flying deck that's trying to get the most out of Errant and Jada. We also have a small angel sub-theme, so this card is perfect. A 3-mana 2-3 with flash and flying. Let's just take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can cast spells with flash or flying from the top as well. And we've got a nice mix of both in this deck. A 2-3 with flash is also pretty good at ambushing some of the smaller creatures in standard, since people are used to playing around the 2-2 knight token from Virtue of Loyalty, but they're not necessarily used to playing around a 2-3 with Flash, so we can potentially eat some 2-powered creatures with it, and then we can start playing spells off the top. Now one card that would synergize well with Errant and Jada is Leyline Binding, but I wanted to go in a slightly different direction and stick to a 2-color mana base, so that's not a card we're playing, but we still have some nice additions from Wilds of Eldraine, specifically the Werefox Bodyguard, a 3-mana 2-2 with Flash. When it enters, can exile up to one other target non-fox creature, and until the bodyguard leaves the battlefield, and then we can also sacrifice it for 2 mana to gain 2 life if the opponent were to take it out, for instance. Now the bodyguard can also exile our own creatures, which can be relevant if, let's say, our opponent casts a sweeper effect, we use a bodyguard to exile our most important creature, then the bodyguard goes away and our original creature comes back, so that can also be a nice interaction. And it's also particularly nice if we exile our Steel Seraph, since exiling a prototype creature means it will come back as the more expensive variant, in this case a 5-4 flyer that can give flying, vigilance or lifelink to one of our creatures until end of turn. And then of course the 3-3 also totally fine when facing the more aggressive decks, and the lifelink can certainly help in a racing situation. And then we've got some more Angels, one copy of the Metropolis Reformer, a 2-3 Flying Vigilance, says we have Hexproof, so we can be targeted by discard spells or burn spells, and then when the Reformer is dealt damage, we gain that much life. It's also pretty good when facing the aggressive decks, if they take it out with a burn spell, we'll still gain a bit of life in the process. And then we also have two copies of Inspiring Overseer, 2-1 Flyer, enters the battlefield gaining one life and drawing a card. And all these angels synergize exceptionally well with Janna, Font of Hope, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, Flying Vigilance, says each other angel we control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel we already control. And then Janna also taps for white mana that we can only spend to cast an angel spell, so there's still plenty of ways to use that extra mana, which will come in handy. And then there's also sequences where we might already have an Errant and Jada in play alongside Jada. Then we could still play a second legendary copy, and in that case it would enter with two plus one plus one counters, turning into a 4-5 as opposed to a 3-4, so that's another cute interaction. And then we've got some more cards we can play at instant speed. Make Disappear as a counter spell, of course. With Casualty, we've got some random tokens we can maybe sacrifice to it if needed, including the tokens we can generate with Mirex, which can also be a nice mana sink in those more controlling matchups. And then we've got two copies of Virtue of Loyalty, making a knight at instant speed, and then later can also help increase the power and toughness of our team. And then to help out against Monorad Aggro, pretty much always need to have some one mana interaction, and Elspeth's Smite is perfect, dealing three damage to an attacking or blocking creature, exiling it in the process, and then rounding out the deck. At four mana, there's Sarah Paragon, which can get back our three drops from the graveyard, so that also has good synergy with some of our angels. And then, of course, the Twining Twins after we use the Insta Speed Adventure, which can also be used to flicker Steel Seraph and kind of upgrade it into the six mana version. Also, good with Overseer drawing us an extra card, or maybe Bodyguard after exiling a token can exile a second creature. And then a 4 4 with Flying Vigilance and Ward 1 can also line up quite well against some of the smaller creature decks. And then, of course, a full set of the Wandering Emperor, still a staple in standard and particularly effective in this deck where we like to keep up our mana. And now we've got a bunch of instant speed options available, including exiling tapped creatures, making samurai, or giving a plus one counter on first strike until end of turn. And then we already mentioned Mirex, also something we can activate at instant speed, so it gives us another mana sink, and then plenty of dual lands, and then a Soaring City and Iganjo, giving us a tiny bit more interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Probably play a tapped beach so we don't have to take damage of a darker waste early, even though we won't be able to kill a hasty one drop now. And then turn to virtue, turn three, a reformer is an option. Planes into initiates, okay. Pass it back. Uh, 
and hope to dodge Thalia. It's going to be an officer for now. So we could ambush the initiates with our token. Another smite. Yeah, let's get the reformer down. I'm happy with the trade since the officer is still kind of a late game card draw engine. Opponent takes it. And Adlin is next. Okay, Jada's not bad. So, could attack with both of my creatures. I think I just send the reformer so we don't tip them off that we have something like Smite in hand. Ossification. I'm going after reformer. And we can just uh, block the token. Block officer and then double smite Adlin is reasonable. Could also keep my knight token because we have virtue of loyalty to grow the team. That might be a little bit better. Sure. And our opponent's got another officer anyways. Okay, so just gonna attack with Jada. Play Virtue, which is more mana efficient. And then next turn we can make use of Jada's mana ability to play Overseer, which will enter with an extra counter. Just need to try and retain our aerial superiority. I'll take six for now. And Steel Seraphis Excellence, so I can play that for 6 mana, or we can play a pair of 3 drops, which might actually be better here. So we'll play Overseer. Now I could also hang on to Make Disappear, but I think this will be good enough. And then I could attack first with both creatures. Don't really need to gain lifelink just yet. Untap, and our opponent explodes. Next turn we can just attack them with all our flyers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. Could use a 3 mana Angel maybe to go with Jada up against the red aggro. Okay, so we're going to be on the back foot. Overseer helps. Now I don't expect Jada to survive if we played on turn 2, so might need to keep up Make Disappear to counter some of their scary 3 drops. Double Swiss Spear, ouch. This is going to hurt. So now with double Swiss Spear, our opponent's more likely to just want to play a bunch of cheap burn spells, which doesn't really play well into my Jada game plan, but also makes Mig disappear a lot worse than if they were to play a 3-drop. So yeah, this is rough. Might have to just play Jada, and then next turn Overseer, turn after Emperor. We'll be taking a lot of damage in the meantime. At least if we play Jada and they play Creature next turn, I can hold off the smaller Swiss Spear. They certainly have some instant in hand, and if it's Monstrous Rage, blocking's not going to work out. Burn spells they probably would have just played before attacking, so I'll just take it. And there's a Monstrous Rage. As the dust settles, we're at 6. And another Emperor could be useful. So hit for 2, play Overseer. And then I have to ask myself if I want to leave up a white mana in case we top deck our um, Elspeth's Smite. Or if we keep Jada on defense. Probably more realistic to keep Jada on defense. Okay, found a Paragon. Could come in handy. But we've got plenty of 4 drops we can cast. So just need to survive this turn, so we can set up our Emperor. Scoundrel going for Wicked Roll. And an all-out attack. Well, if our opponent's got any way of triggering Prowess, it's probably game over, so... I'm not gonna try and play around it. 
Just set up some trades. And then I take four. Yeah, that seems reasonable. And then now we could a Wandering Emperor immediately exiling the Swift Spear. Although if they have a Lightning Strike next turn, I would be dead anyways. So we may as well wait for them to attack. Opponent channeling Crucible. So that's two hasty 1-1s. One so I'm not dead yet. We're at one. Can make a samurai. And then still have another wandering emperor left over here. Could main phase it on the scoundrel. But well, let's wait. I'll gain the two before we lose one from the wicked roll at least. So line up some blocks. And then flash an emperor, hope for the best. Alright, so we're still at one. Get to untap. And then now steal Seraph, giving a lifelink. Could get us out of range. Played for three mana. And then still have make disappear available, seems better. Alright, our opponent concedes. Once we're out of burn range, with counterspell backup, that's good enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Jada into multiple angels. Bodyguard for a bit of interaction. Facing green-white. Not known for having a lot of removal, so flying over could be quite effective. Let's see what variety of green-white it is. Could be enchantments. Mirex points in a different direction. And I go for the throats. Alright, so not quite the deck I had in mind after all. So we'll pass with Errants and Jada available. And up the Beanstalk, so it's definitely more of a controlling deck. Alright, that's gonna make things a bit more difficult. Smite, not the best draw here. Can play Steel Seraph off the top at least. And an Overseer coming up next. And lifelink seems good. Could go for Vigilance to play around Wandering Emperor. Don't think the life gain's gonna matter too much. Opponent's probably playing quite a few sweeper effects. Another up the Beanstalk. So they're definitely gearing up for the late game. Can expect Sunfall next turn. And a commune with Spirits. Finds a land. Got a Virtue of Loyalty on top. That's going to be a nice way to get back on the board. And yeah, we can play Overseer now. And then see what else is on top. And then still play the token end of turn to maybe recover from a Sweeper. Make Disappear would have been nice to have. And then now... I think I'm fine just going for Lifelink. Kind of expecting a sweeper anyway. One trick we could have potentially pulled off is bodyguard our own creature. Let's say exile Steel Seraph, then if our opponent casts a sweeper, then uh, Steel Seraph essentially comes back as a 5-4. Maybe that would have been a better play. So our opponent's going to wipe the board. I'm drawing two cards in the process to wipe the board once again. So now I can get the Virtue going. B shields down on Make Disappear. Or we can play a Steel Seraph, keep up our counter spell for another turn. Iganjo makes it difficult to kind of counter it with Make Disappear. 
I think Steel Seraph keep up make disappear still makes a little bit more sense. And then hope to count for some expensive card here. Opponent passes. Wandering Emperor the draw. So opponent's planning to, at the very least, use Iganjo. And then, yeah, could set up the Bodyguard play where I exile my own creature. Don't hate that. If they try and block with a creature land, we can punish them. It's going to be a march. 4x equals 4. So our opponent's going to get to draw two cards. And then I can decide whether I counter this or use bodyguard. Not hating the idea of bodyguard. Still denies a life gain. Get to hit for two, and then a sweeper's not as bad. Although it's not a bad window to make disappear. It's just that if our opponent then has a Sweeper, what happens? I guess we could still play Bodyguard, Exiling Steel Seraph, get it back, have a 5-powered creature. Yeah, you know what, let's just counter this. Then our opponent will be at 6, and then a 5-powered Steel Seraph with a counter from Emperor would be enough. They might have another March in hand that they can cast by pitching a few spells. Yeah, March for zero on the token. Well, can't stop that. So now we're not going to have lethal anymore if uh, the game plays out the way we thought it would. March for six. Opponent's going all in. So exile our own Seraph. Deny the life gain. But our opponent once again draws two. Make disappear the draw. Certainly interesting. Can attack, play Virtue, or we can pass with Counterspell and Emperor available. Might be our opportunity to get a Virtue of Loyalty down. Yeah, sure. And then if they kill Bodyguard, we get Steel Serve back. With Emperor, we could still present Lethal, but it's probably not gonna play out that way since your opponent can kill Bodyguard at instant speed. Sunfall. So they would still have mana to animate the token here, but Steel Seraph has flying. So do they have another removal spell? Go for the throat's not gonna work. Maybe another Black March by pitching a few cards. And no, opponent concedes. Definitely a premature concession since we were only attacking for five here, but with a Wandering Emperor we would have gotten there. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing some 1 and 2 mana interaction. Can I keep? Yeah, I'll try it. On the play, we can probably afford to be a little bit slower. Overseer and Bodyguard both also pretty decent alongside Paragon, if this is a grindier matchup. And hope to pick up some cheaper plays. Jada would be pretty high up on the list. Find a Steel Surf instead. Also good with the Paragon. And our opponent does appear to be on maybe a 5-color Invasion of Alara build, so we want to dig towards a counterspell as quickly as possible. And Overseer is one way to do that. Alright, there it is. So we've got our counter for Invasion. Still need to try and apply a bit of pressure here, since the opponent's deck is filled with powerful cards. Okay, with Familiar, they're technically threatening Invasion next turn already. Green, black, red or white, and then blue or black. So they just need an untapped land to go off. So we could play Bodyguard Exile Familiar, and then we don't have to make disappear just yet. Sure. Although they could easily have removal for Bodyguard, but that doesn't matter. What matters is not having them cast... Invasion of Alara. So Virtue kills Bodyguard. Familiar's back. And yeah, they would have had the mana to cast an Invasion. Another Make Disappear is useful. So now we can play Steel Seraph and then still keep up our counter. Just double checking that it taps our mana in a sensible way. And 
And then I wouldn't mind drawing another land so we can play Paragon, keep up make disappear. There's the invasion. Unlike Cascade, it's not actually a trigger. That still goes on the stack. Okay, go for another Steel Seraph. And then keep a MiG disappear. This time I'll have to pay a life. And then probably no reason to go for Vigilance in this matchup. No Wandering Emperor to play around. So hit for five. And yeah, with another counter spell at the ready, I'm liking my chances. Opponent had the second invasion as well. So good thing we top decked another make disappear. Our opponent is facing eight damage, so not quite good enough for lethal, but still good enough for a concession. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Gonna make disappear on two. And then Arant and Jada. Uh, something we can play alongside keeping up our counter spell. Opponent also blue white. Looks to be a more aggressive deck if they're featuring Seacrum Coast. Celestus. Yeah, I think they can have it, even though it makes her make disappear worse. Means I can resolve Arant and Jada for now. A whale on top. And Seacrum Coast coming up next. Could potentially play an Inspiring Overseer here, play a tapped Seacrum Coast, be shields down for a potential Sunfall, but then next turn keep up our counterspell. I think that's reasonable. Gets the tap plant out of the way, so next turn we can more easily 3-drop plus 2-drop. And we've got a backup Arant and Jada coming up. Opponent actually has the smite, that's too bad, but we've got a replacement coming in. And at the fairies next. Pretty good with the Celestus as well. Okay, so next up, attack to fairy. Plan to flash in another Arant and Jada. Opponent's got ample sweepers, it seems. They're gonna try and tap my land down, can float some mana. And then play Arant and Jada still while keeping up Make Disappear. Now we're still in the opponent's second main phase, so they could still cast a sorcery gonna be a dissipate which I cannot pay for. Alright, let's hit the ferry. And it depopulates fine. Can fight over Wandering Emperor resolving. And that resolves. And then plus one counter helps us take out the fairy. Okay, pass it back, can flash in the whale to keep up the pressure. And then if our opponent has their own emperor, they wouldn't be able to pay the ward on the whale to exile it. Now I'm hesitant to make more samurai since our opponent probably still has a sweeper in hand. Make the spear could be a way to counter it now, I suppose. We have two of them. Yeah, making another Samurai seems reasonable enough. Keep 
can also sacrifice the Mirex token to casualty if needed. It's gonna be another Teferi. Thing that's acceptable. Can't easily fight over it. it. Does give the opponent a bit of extra mana here, but we should be able to take out a fairy within the next turn. And, some think and a sunfall will counter. Activate Mirex. Putin could still technically have an Elspeth's Smite to deal 3 damage to one of my creatures. But then I could maybe use Emperor to give it an extra counter. So I'll keep making Samurai in the hopes that we'll be able to counter Sweeper. If our opponent goes land plus 5 mana Sweeper, I guess they get us. Let your blade do the tossing. That works. And then seems too sketchy to play a Virtue of Loyalty, so we'll just pass with our instance available. Bonan does get to see a lot of cards here with the Celestis. And it depopulates. Yeah, depopulates. I cannot counter with Make Disappear, so that's pretty effective. Okay. The advantage of having some 4 mana sweepers alongside your 5 mana ones. Activates Celestus. Now we can still make some tokens here with Virtue and Mirex. So there's still hope. So we'll go for a plus one counter. And then now I should probably just play Virtue of Loyalty as opposed to playing more creatures out. And then next turn we can go shields up again. Another Teferi. This is a serious situation. We can still have a little fun. They could also minus to go digging for an extra removal spell. And that's what they do. Okay, so what's next? Can play Steel Seraph, giving the token Vigilance to play around a Wandering Emperor. Although, of course, we could still counter it as well. And then I'll make another Samurai to start going wide again. But we do want to make sure to finish off the Fairy. So yeah, let's play Steel Seraph for 3 mana. Vigilance. has got a smite. So yeah, slightly annoying. Means that they will be able to untap with Teferi, which gives them more mana to make my counterspell worse. But I guess so it goes. If I want to make disappear, I would have to sacrifice Steel Seraph, which doesn't seem great. And they also had an Iganjo. Okay. I guess that's fine too. Could have maybe gone for uh, another Wandering Emperor, give it a plus one counter to save it. But I'm kind of still liking sitting back on my various instants in case we need to make disappear. The fairy plussing, tapping Steel Seraph so they can maybe exile it with an Emperor. Or a White Sense Twilight for five. Okay, so just gonna counter unless they pay four, sacking the samurai. Then we get to finish off the fairy, make another samurai. Us 
Also not opposed to main phase, activate Mirex so the token picks up a counter. Or I can go for another 3 mana Seraph and then hope they don't draw a uh, 4 mana Sweeper once again. Yeah, that seems reasonable too. And then Vigilance to play around Emperor. And Lifelink here as well. So to ferry down. Still have an Emperor to get back on the board end of turn. For now, grow the team. Opponent does nothing. Yeah, could activate Mirex instead of playing Emperor into potential counter spell. I have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If I go for Samurai, 15, so it's still one short of lethal. So I guess we can sandbag or Emperor. I guess her opponent also gains one more from Celestus, so it would have been too short. Okay, double Vigilance. Opponent does have the Emperor, but wouldn't be super effective. Makes a Samurai. And that's not going to work out for them. Still probably best to keep a Make Disappear as opposed to making another token in case they find a uh, Sunfall we can counter it unless they pay 4. And we've got more than enough on the board. Opponent activates Celestus, so yeah, now it should be over. Yeah, definitely could have played some turns a bit better when they had the Fairy. Probably no reason to give the token Vigilance, since if they have an Emperor, they would have just made a Samurai token. So would have been forced to counter anyway. So yeah, maybe should have uh, gone for a slightly different line there, but yeah, still worked out. Having a few counter spells to counter some key sweepers is pretty important. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has a few weaknesses, no double white being one of them, only two lands. And then a land entering tapped, so we don't quite get to smite on turn one. So, yeah, couple strikes against it, but on the draw we're pretty likely to find another white source. And then our hand's not bad against the aggressive red decks. And then, if we're not up against a super aggressive deck, we should have time to develop our mana. Now I'll probably play Jada, so we can at least play an Angel next turn without a land. And against Mono White, I don't expect a ton of removal. Looks like an ossification anyway. Okay. So, just gonna pass, make a Knight end of turn. Definitely looks like a more controlling White deck as opposed to White Aggro. It's not the best matchup for Smite. Okay, Mirex is good. So, what do we want to play? Probably Steel Seraph while we have double white. And then could go for Flying to avoid trading for an opposing knight token. Opponent's got their own virtue. Okay. And then Steel Seraph is pretty good at playing around an opposing Emperor. Opponent now with Announcement, which they might have had last turn, but wanted to play around a Counterspell. And a Jada the draw. So, yeah, being stuck on three lands is not ideal. Now we do have the Twins to Flicker Steel Seraph. That's potentially an interesting play we have available. Now Steel Seraph not that likely to be targeted by removal, especially if we give it Vigilance. So, might still be better off playing Jada and then uh, kind of developing our mana that way. Could still attack first, and then if they try and block with the knights, we can smite. Although that would also be my entire turn, so maybe I don't even bother attacking with the knights. Just go for a vigilant attack to keep playing around Wandering Emperor. And play Jada. 
And now that we've got some more flyers, it's going to be easier to pass a turn with our various instant speed plays available. Circuit Mender, not bad against the red aggro. Probably why it's there. Coast enters tapped, sadly. Can still play our Angel using Jada and then have Smite available. So that might be the play, even though Jada would be tapped, so it could get exiled by an Emperor. So this one keeps getting Vigilance. And then I'll tap Jana to play Reformer. A nice 4-5. Farmhand's fine. So our opponent's facing a 2 turn clock in the air. And uh, yeah, they want to draw with Wedding Announcement. I think I'm fine taking out both creatures even though they get to draw. Let's see if this leaves the battlefield, so exiling it doesn't make a difference. Okay, Make Disappear gives us insurance against a potential sweeper. So yeah, just attack with our flyers. Could also, I guess, fly the knight, which would have been an option. Although, does not present lethal. Although at this point, Wandering Emperor is not really a concern, since we have Twining Twins to flicker Steel Seraph. So maybe flying is uh, totally reasonable now. Opponent falls to three. And we can just pass with our various tricks available. Ooh, red mana, I see. Is this a Nahiri's Resolve deck, maybe? Sunfall is not gonna resolve. Came out of the left field here. And our opponent explodes. Even just the Twining Twins uh, exiling the Steel Seraph would have been enough to beat the opponent, since the creature comes back end of turn, so it would have been a 5 power creature to cross the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a nice hand. Especially against the red aggressive deck, turn 1 Smite, turn 2 Jada, turn 3 Steel Seraph. Is a pretty nasty curve. Okay, Epicure, we won't be able to Smite. Although if Jada survives, I can still tap it for mana to play Seraph and keep up Smite. So a lot riding on Jada surviving here would go a long way. Looks like our opponent's a red-white tokens deck perhaps. Makes a treasure. They could still have the uh, goblin tokens. Just a frontliner. If they destroy the blood token, they could make three one ones, which is pretty nice for convoke. Now we have to make a decision. I think just playing Steel Seraph using a darker wastes and then not tapping Jada is also reasonable. So we can attack with it and gain two. Or we can keep up Smites and maybe exile the Frontliner so it doesn't come back. And in that case I may as well just attack for two first. And then second main Steel Seraph with a counter. And next turn we can play an even bigger one. Battle Mouse plus maybe another two drop here thanks to the discount. Could also see a Convoked a Knight Errant. Okay, so there wasn't much benefit in keeping up Elspeth Smite at this turn. Opponent finding a Skralv and Scoundrel. But yeah, a large life-linking Steel Serve can be one way to outrace this Convoke deck. So now we could also use the Whale. So maybe go for an attack. Steel Serve going for Vigilance as an option. And then play Steel Serve second main tapping Jada. Does mean we miss out on the lifelink that we could get, but we get two more damage in. Which, with our opponent at 18, could be worthwhile. We seem to be pretty far ahead in the race. Although if our opponent pumps their team next turn with the recruiter, I might prefer the life gain. Alright, let's go for the life gain then.
Yeah, two more damage would still not quite present lethal next turn. So I think this makes sense. Scoundrel could make treasure and then still see recruiter. Goes to discard and draw instead. Okay. This red-white deck not known for having a lot of removal. And Steel Seraph seems like an excellent tool in this kind of matchup. Okay, opponent does have the Demolition making three goblins. So if they had a Recruiter, the damage would pile on very quickly indeed. Now there are arguments for not using the Whale on Knight Errant, because then next turn they could Convoke it, and then potentially find a Recruiter. Although it does prevent the most damage. And our opponent's about to lose their entire board pretty much. So I don't mind. So go to blocks. And Steel Seraph number 3 is probably going to be too much for them to handle, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has some useful tools against aggressive decks with a turn 1 smite. Turn 2 we can also flicker an opposing creature just to kind of prevent the damage for a turn. And then hopefully pick up some more useful 3 mana plays. Turn 1 mountain. And Kumano. So 3 damage should hopefully be enough to kill their 2 drop. Hoping it's not Felden since 3 damage would dig 3 cards deep. It's going to be a Swiss Spear, so if they also have an instant, they can uh, potentially punish my Smite, so I'm hoping they go for it now. Play with Fire. Alright, perfect. Kill Swiss Spear. Only take two damage. And then I could use the Twins to flicker Kumano. Seems worthwhile. Next turn we can I Ganjo, and then on turn 4 we've got Emperor. So their Saga starts again from Chapter 1. Can hang on to the Mirex to maybe play Twins without taking damage. Opponent with another Burn spell end of turn. And a squeeze next. Would be nice to exile, but I'll just deal with it now. So it doesn't get out of hand. Still gets a token, and they're not too far from getting it back. Okay, so could play the twins. And then have a relatively large creature. That might be preferable over keeping up Wandering Emperor here. And then if they attack into the twins, we know they might have a trick up their sleeve, and we can try and punish it next turn with our instant speed interaction. And alright, our opponent concedes. Twins is too good on defense. Alright, so we got to see our blue-white flash deck in action. And yeah, the deck has some interesting play patterns, some unique synergies, twining twins with the prototypes. We've got our various flash creatures we can play off the top. And then uh, we're also packing a small angel package, so Jada can also lead to some powerful starts. So all in all, a pretty powerful deck, and definitely adjusted to beat Monored in this meta. Means that it's potentially going to be weaker in other matchups, since we've got the removal like Elspeth's Smite, which is especially good against red but can be a bit weaker against let's say a mono white deck where Thalia is going to make it more expensive. So there's definitely a bit of give and take when building a flash deck for best of one. Can't really beat every single matchup but with a good draw you always stand a chance. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.